It should be down here. Go down, go to Tenmu. Oh! Go a little further down, go on. Go down to 30. There it is. Right below here runs the new freighter base tunnel, where high speed and high capacity trains will pass through. Fire. Let's start with the name. Why is it called the base tunnel? Because there is already a railway that crosses the Brenner today, but it's a historic surface line that follows the terrain and climbs up to 1,300 meters in altitude with slopes that reach up to 26 per thousand. The new line, on the other hand, will be completely in a tunnel built at a much lower elevation between 700 and 800 meters and with maximum slopes of just seven per thousand. The lower the slope, the heavier and faster the trains can travel and with less energy consumption. For freight trains, for example, this means avoiding the use of additional locomotives and reducing costs. For passengers, on the other hand, it means faster travel times and greater comfort. The base tunnel will connect Forteza, which is in Italy, with Innsbruck in Austria, and will drastically reduce travel times from 80 minutes to 25 minutes for passenger trains, and from 105 minutes to 35 minutes for freight trains. The project includes two parallel tunnels, one for each direction, connected every 333 meters by cross passages which are also called bypasses in technical jargon. There are also plans for four access tunnels and three emergency stops. And now, let's enter the construction site. We are at one of the construction sites built by WeBuild. Just a few kilometers north of Forteza. In this section here, the tunnel is practically finished, as you can see. Two tracks will run through here. Oh, oh wow. And of course, there will be the final touches, but you might be wondering, Andrea, why did you bring us here to a tunnel that's basically completed? Because right in this section, the challenge was huge. Digging under the bed of the Asarco River, where obviously, if you dig, there will be water seeping in. How did they do it? Well, with the freezing technique, first, they drill holes around the outline of the excavation, then insert pipes into which liquid nitrogen at minus 196 degrees Celsius is injected. The nitrogen freezes the water in the ground, making it stable. The nitrogen is then replaced by a brine solution to keep the temperature below minus 10 degrees. This always happens inside the pipes, so the soil and the groundwater are not affected. At that point, since the ground is stable, it allows for safe excavation. But now we're moving to a section of the construction site 10 kilometers further north. Because we have an appointment with Flavia. We're at the Malls 2 to 3 site, between Malls and the Brenner Pass, the largest site in the entire project. Now we're going to take this little train and head to the excavation front. It will take us about 45 minutes. We have to travel about 15 kilometers inside the mountain. Let's go! Here, the geological context is extremely complex. We're right in the middle of the Alps. So we're in a compressive environment where there are many types of rocks, highly deformed, folded, and faulted, as you can see. Keep in mind that right now, at this very moment, above our heads, there are 1,500 to 1,700 meters of mountain. So, an important aspect is choosing the right excavation technique based on the needs and the type of rock. There are basically two types of excavation, the traditional method and the one using a mechanized mold, known in the field as a TBM which stands for Tunnel Boring Machine. And today the attraction is precisely her. And here we are, aboard Flavia. Flavia is the name of the TBM. TBMs are always given female names. So we've talked about TBMs in other videos, 
but we've never actually been on board, never seen one in operation. So now I'm going to show you how it works. Here's a quick conceptual summary to understand how it works. It's basically a giant drill, about 200 meters long, that can dig and build the tunnel at the same time. In fact, right behind its rotating head, there's a mechanical arm called the erector, which places the prefabricated segments that basically form the skeleton of the tunnel. Guys, we're at the front. These are the so-called cutters, Basically, the teeth that bite into the rock. Right behind this rotating head is solid rock. Right now, it's not running, but soon it will be. Obviously, we'll have to get out of here because there will be broken pieces of rock flying everywhere. Look, this is an almost brand new cutter. See how far the two sticks out. Look how much it sticks out. And now I'll show you a worn out one. Here it is. Look at this. Basically, the steel alloy is all eaten away, totally worn out. Each segment is about five meters. And as the TBM moves forward and makes space, these segments are placed around to create a ring. It takes seven of them to make a complete ring. Today is a special day for us because thanks to this, we're moving a segment. Watch how they're installed. You move the levers on this joystick and the segment shifts. Now we are going to the left. Go. Hello. Incredible. Keep in mind that even though the TBM is mechanized, it still takes 90 people working in three shifts to operate it. Here we go, guys. We're ready to restart the TBM right now. We're just 50 meters away from reaching the border with Austria. Are we ready? Should I go? Go ahead. Guys, I'm going. Inside, there's the operator who's driving the TBM. You see, he has to make sure the excavation continues at the right slope, moving at a speed of 19 or 20 millimeters per minute. Tunnels aren't always dug with a tunnel boring machine. In some cases, they're excavated using the traditional method, which means with explosives. Look over there. Do you see those sticks of dynamite? That's dynamite. They get placed. Look, look at what he's doing. He's putting them into these holes. There are about 95 holes in this case for a total of 150 kilograms of dynamite. And do you know what happens next? Three, two, one, fire. The excavation advanced by two meters like that. The unique thing about this construction site is that all the excavated material is transported outside using these electric conveyor belts. They're basically giant treadmills. Well, I just had to grab a little sample as a souvenir. This system helps reduce the truck traffic that would otherwise be coming in and out to haul away all the material. All in all, not bad for cutting down on traffic and emissions. Just think, there are a total of 90 kilometers of these conveyor belts here, with a focus on circular economy. Some of the excavated material was used to produce the segments we saw earlier in the TBM. And get this, just for the tunnels in the mule section, over 170,600 segments were produced. Well guys, what a video, what a video. I'm so happy, really happy. I want to thank all the people we met on the construction sites, technicians, engineers, geologists, because they opened their doors to us, and that's not something you can take for granted. I also want to thank BBDC, which is the client for the project, and the company we build, which is working on 50 of the 64 kilometers of this incredibly long tunnel, and gave us the opportunity to come in here and share all of this with you. And of course, I want to thank all of you for sticking with us until the end. I'll see you again right here on Geopop, Everyday Science.